Yeah, God doesn't have the ability to let you die. God doesn't have the ability to forsake his word because of how he feels. Can I get a witness in here? And so we must understand that God has the ability, he has the propensity, he has the wherewithal, he has the authority to deliver us out of every single solitary thing that we may face in this world. But just because you're delivered doesn't mean that you won't be afflicted. Yeah, just because you are delivered from something doesn't mean that every now and then there will not be an affliction. Oh yeah, it has a time that we all face in, our, in everyone's life where we have been afflicted or are being afflicted or will be afflicted. That covers everybody, doesn't it? There are many ways that affliction can come. For some, it may be sickness. It may be an illness that most prescription medicine can't cure. Or well, there's some pains that Tylenol just can't heal. That's an affliction. For some of us, it might be a domestic situation when the family is in turmoil and everyone is declaring that nothing is wrong and no one wants spiritual counsel. I said all the time that we as black people have a problem with getting counsel. Yeah, we have a problem with sitting down talking to somebody about what we consider to be our business. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. If it affects everyone around you, it's not just your business. I can't hear nobody talking to me this morning. If it affects everybody, then nobody can have a good day at work because of you. Yeah. If when you mad, the whole house mad, can't nobody iron, can't nobody wash clothes, nothing because you upset. Somebody guilty in here. I'll see you in They going on. I tell you what, they going. 
popping pills. You the one with your blood pressure up. I can't hear nobody. You the one got acid indigestion. Why? Because you haven't learned to let things go. Some things you can hold entirely too long. No, but I'm, I'm not going to speak to Sister So and So. I'm going to walk to the other side of the church when I see her. But I don't want to have nothing to do with her. Because she stepped on my toe in 1981 and I ain't forgot it yet. Better forget about that mess and go on with God. But a lot of times we're holding on to things that mean nothing. You got whole families upset with somebody else's family and don't even know why. Like the hat pills of the car. They don't even know why they feel. That's right. The great grandchildren mad at the other great grandchildren and don't even know why. I don't know what it is, but I just can't stand them. I don't know what it is, but I can't stand him. It's amazing how we just allow things to just get in us. But that in itself is an affliction. I'm almost through. And so, I know I'm not bored with you all that. So, if we look at it, we have ways to cope with afflictions. I'm going to continue this on next week. Uh, number one, we must run to Jesus. We must run to Jesus. The Bible tells us to cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for us. Running to Jesus coupled with repentance should always be our first reaction to affliction. And to be able to walk into real deliverance. Number two, casting all of your cares on him. You, you, got, you got stress, throw it on Jesus. He can handle it. He can bear it. And so we must understand that God wants us to lean and depend on him. I know you think you got it all together. I know that you think you can fix everything on your own. But every now and then, you come to a time where you just going to have to give it to Jesus. Say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I know you ain't. Lord, I can't fix it, but I know you can fix it. I, Lord, I can't hold on to it no longer, but I know you're a bird in back. You're a heavy load shower. You're able to work things out for me that I can't work out for myself. So, as we notice, in the able to have real deliverance, that will be afflictions. Some of you now have been asking God for a job and you ended up getting a job but then they tried to lay you off. Yeah. That is an affliction. Yeah. And some of you might be in a position where you've been praying and asking God for a husband. Now, you go out with him and think that that's the man and then you find out that he's nothing but some dirty mess. And I get a witness in here.